The evolution of Ocarina's Zora as seen in Wind Waker actually makes perfect sense. I mean, not in them going from fish people to bird people, that's still weird and smells of divine intervention. But the fact of the matter is… well… as weird as it sounds, the Great Flood would likely result in the Zora dying out. Of dehydration, of all things. Let me explain. Zora are fish people. If we assume they function like regular fish do, then that would make them very sensitive to rapid changes in the chemical makeup of the water, especially with regards to the salinity. Here's how it works. The majority of fish species are either freshwater or saltwater. They have evolved to live within a very specific range of salinity. Suddenly finding themselves well outside of this range will kill them. That is because fish osmoregulate. The water moves in and out of their bodies depending on the concentration of salt content. This means that freshwater fish are adjusted to take in lots of water, expel lots of water by peeing in their pool and retain the salt content. Water constantly goes into the fish and the fish has evolved to manage that inflow by getting rid of the excess. Saltwater fish do the exact opposite. They drink a lot and do their best to retain water and expel excess salt. At the same time, the sea surrounding them is constantly trying to pull water out of them through osmosis, because it is saltier than the body of the fish. So what happens when you put a freshwater fish into salt water? The fish will continue to expel water as it evolved to do. Meanwhile, the very body of water it is stuck in sucks even more H2O out of it. This results in the fish dying of dehydration. For saltwater fish, it turns out their bodies have higher salt content than your average pond. Who knew? So, what happens is, the fish will continue to drink while surrounding body of water pushes its way into the fish's body. The fish then dies of overhydration. There are also a handful of fish species that can switch between these two environments. The most known example of it is salmon. These fish begin their life in a river, swim downstream into the sea and remain in the sea until it is time to swim upstream again to breathe. However, fish like that are very much an exception and not the rule. It's the same as fish breathing atmospheric air. There are fish that can do that. There are fish that can drown. That doesn't mean it works that way for the vast majority of fish species though. Zora are very much portrayed like they would be a freshwater species. To my knowledge, save for one exception, they are always portrayed as living in lakes and rivers, never venturing into the sea. The only time that doesn't hold true is in Majora's Mask, but that's in Termina, so maybe their Zora are different. And if that's correct, then that means the Great Flood would result in the Zora dying out due to dehydration. Mind, it would still make way more sense for them to adapt from freshwater fish to saltwater fish than from freshwater fish to seagull. Like I said at the beginning, that part still feels like there is magic at play. But this all still puts the stunning theory about why that happened in a new light. The shift from Zora to Rito has been explained as an intervention from Golden Goddesses. The goal was to preserve the balance in Hyrule by preventing the Zora from becoming the dominant species in an environment that is 99% water. However, if I am right that Zora would simply cease existing due to incorrect salinity levels, well, then this divine intervention feels more like damage control. Like the goddesses realized they doomed an entire race of people, so they just kinda jumped in to fix it before it's too late. In other words, they aren't actually trying to preserve balance, they are trying to prevent the oopsie, we did a genocide. Also, what balance? Take one look at Hyrule in any of the games, one look at the position Hylians take within it. Does that really count as balance? And before you say it in the comments, yes, I know that the Great Flood happened through massive amounts of rain, which is fresh water. The problem is that all this fresh water would mix with the large volume of seawater already present in seas and oceans. Seas and oceans are much, much saltier than fresh water. All that salt concentration would be greatly diluted, that's true. Still, the resulting solution would likely be way too salty for most freshwater fish. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. All this and Rito and Barry mentioned, lol. Well, fear not. 
for if you'd like to see me break down the biology of the Rito, here's a video for ya. And a huge thank you to my Draconic Sages. Jardint, Von Bob, Fiona, Gigacykni, Merberb and Lothar the Destroy. See ya!